channel yes and you're welcome back to this program some days with the love the spencer yeah 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 thank you for the comments thank you for the thumbs up thank you for the sharing thank you for everything i'm so happy thank you for making me want to come back here again and talk and talk and talk and talk and keep enjoying myself while talking so last week we talked about common sense in courtship and we're not able to finish it we talked about so many things last week and i and i know that you are putting it into practice i know i know okay so today quickly we are not wasting so much of our time quickly we are going to be talking about the final um topic or the final common sense in courtship today and it is what flee 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 from every sexual immorality as a young man as a young lady in courtship so in courtship there are some there are some things you cannot deny to get in courtship there are some things that comes come up so if you feel courtship is a time where oh no don't no no those kind of things will not come up ah it's a liar see let me let me tell you the devil is very tricky so you have to understand his tricky attitudes do you get so those little little subtle things he comes he doesn't come like a devil with a horn with everything he comes in subtle subtle maybe discussions here and there words you know actions here and there so we have to be very 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 careful and we have to be knowledgeable to know when those things come in so my topic flee i always say flee is a mixture of run and fly <laughs> so what are you fleeing from sexual immorality okay so somebody will ask, no, ah, we have already said it, that we are not going to be involved in sex. Yes, you're not going to be involved in sex. But do you know that there are some kind that sex starts from subtle, subtle things? Do you know that sexual immorality starts from things that don't look like it? How? So many ways, so many things, so many people have delved into sexual immorality before, without knowing without knowing how it started so it's not only when she comes and wears something so seductive and comes and does like this does you know those things that they do to say these people it's not only that time it's not only they know or god it's not only there that you feel that oh this is the devil oh i'm not going to fall no there's little little things even from that your um fiance that is a christian or fiance that is a believer that is a bro tongue speaking sister tongues capital letter tongue speaking brother it can come see not because she's bad not because he's bad but because we are in this container called flesh one number two because the devil does not want you to triumph over your body the bible says put your body under subject your flesh you know subject your flesh the feelings of the flesh subjected do you get so subtle subtle ways the devil brings in, you know, thoughts of sex, feelings and things. Feelings will just be flying left, right, center, up and down. So there are so many things I want to talk about this flame. So many instances I want to bring up. So that when you see these things, you know that, ah, this is a warning signal. So we have to run away from it. You are not just running away from a naked woman or a naked man. You are running away from things that does not seem to be bad but in the real sense they are okay first of all um know your body know your body understand your body understand your body young lady understand when you need excessive care when you need cuddling when you need excessive prolonged hugging that is a time where you need to do what keep a distance yes as a lady in there's a time in your circle where you're all normal you're like ah oh, no i can't fall for sexual immorality but there's a time where you don't just understand what's going on you just need somebody to hug you you just need somebody to tell you i love you you just need somebody to want to kiss you someone to want to hug you know those kind of prolonged hugs and all you want to feel all mushy 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 there'll be a time like that so you have to be sensible enough to say ah this is something that i have to it, that, those when you experience those, it doesn't mean that you are evil it doesn't mean that you are bad that is what that is your body system it is god that put it in us 
Do you understand? It is our creator that put it in us. So it's your body system. But what you need to do is to be able to identify one that this is a vulnerable area and quickly block out every, you know, it's just like fuel, block out every flame. So at that period, you know that you don't need to have physical contacts. If possible, don't see him. Or if you can't stay without seeing him, see him in a very open place, which is even advisable on all conditions. Do you understand? See him in a very open place outside where, of course, nothing can happen. Uh -uh. You will not get all mushy, you'll be yourself. And brother, you're feeling, ah, this, you are in a room, you're sitting down with her talking, and of course, not, you're just talking free talk, and you're feeling, you are now becoming too relaxed, you're feeling all cozy, something is happening in your system. That is the time to run. That is the time to say, okay, let's, let's, that, I think we have to end it here. I want to start going. She might not understand. Some uh, sisters like me, that is, we know all these things. I will understand. But even if she's, uh, she understands, that's why two of you are there. For one to understand and help each other. Do you get? So that is the time for you to say, ah, okay, I think we have to call it the day. I need to go. You're helping yourself. You're helping yourself. Like I said, the fling is not where you say Delilah. Your fiancé might not, is not a Delilah. Yes, we talked about all the red flags, so we are not going with any lady or any guy with all those red flags. So we are a changed person today. So he is not a male Delilah and she's not a Delilah. So at that point in time, what you have to do is to leave. Leave. Or you come in and you see that she's all mushy, she's just lying on the bed, just, you know, just wanting, you know, unnecessary attention. My dear, it's a time to leave. She might be angry then, but you are doing the both of you a favor. So you leave. Maybe next time when everything is fine, you come back. That is another side. Then another side to it is avoiding some nasty areas of, gray areas of discussion. You know, of course in courtship you have to talk about anything, everything. You have to talk about things, money, you have to talk about sex, you have to talk about things like that. But you see the area of sex, there are so many gray areas that you need wisdom to avoid. I want to say this, as two people, grown-ups that are cutting, please don't avoid the topic of sex in your discussion. Do not avoid it. Okay, somebody might ask me, what am I going to be talking about sex? Ask the person, what is your view on sex? One, what is your view on pornography? Do you like, do you, do you, um, do you buy into anal sex, oral sex, and all those things? It's very important so that you will not get into the marriage and the husband is asking you to do something and you're like, ah, uh -uh, no, I can't do this and it will not be an issue. So you discuss it there. So you discuss your convictions and everything around sex. That is it. But in the discussion of sex, there are gray areas. So there are some things that you don't need to talk about. Like I just said, talk about what is your idea on sex. Okay, you, there is no, there is no need asking, trying to ask, uh, what if, um, what if, uh, 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 okay, can we, can we have sex on the balcony? Can we have sex in the kitchen? Can, there is no need for those kind of questions. Those kind of questions are time bombs. There is no need. When you get married, you can decide whether you want to have sex on the roof. That one is your own business. But while cutting, there are some gray areas in sex you shouldn't go to. Don't go to. It's just like putting fire in your bosom and you don't uh, you don't want to be burned. There will be times like that. You know when you know those times where you chat into eleven. I don't know if you've experienced it. Eleven, twelve, and you're not becoming so. I don't mean physical chat or maybe on phone chatting. You not become so cozy. You know that moment you're on your bed. He's on his bed, and you know those those times. Eleven, twelve, one, two. Those times are very crazy times. In fact, you should be prayed by those times if you're in a relationship. Be prayed. <laughs> so. There are some gray areas. Don't discuss those areas. There is no need. There are some unnecessary discussion. The devil might want to bring it up, but they are, they, are, they, are, they are not necessary. And I want to advise, when you want to talk about sex, 
please and please let it be about one month to the wedding don't start cutting in january and you're planning to marry in november and you start from january to start talking about sex talk about things like finances start with things like finances family goals you know things and things like that then maybe if you're getting married in november start in october to talk about sex you can be reading your books on sex say yeah 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 i want to recommend a book for you if you're in courtship and you really want to have a knowledge about um sex and all that i will recommend the book i'll put it in the description um box and maybe the link where you can get the book or if i have this soft copy i can put it so you have knowledge because knowledge about sex in marriage is very very important so that's why i'm mentioning it here but you have to avoid the gray areas avoid the gray areas because if you're physical if you're physically talking about sex and i want to even say so when it comes to the the what now the time for you to discuss sex and all that i feel that you can get you can talk with your mentor two of you if you can't hold it that's why i say understand your body understand yourself there is how there are some people that like sanguines we know how to fall yakata in love <laughs> yes we know how to fall yakata so we just fall and lose guard if not for the holy spirit that has helped some of us do you get we'll just fall yakata and lose guard so if you know that your body system can't handle it you can decide to talk about it in front of your mentor talk about it in front of your spiritual father or somebody that two of you respect or better still go to a counselor of course there are marriage counseling sessions and talk about it ask your questions they ask her questions there if you feel that you can't handle it because really the area of sex talking about sex in courtship is something that the devil can use he can use it to bring down <laughs> people's spirituality but it is a very good topic to talk about it is very very important that you talk about it don't neglect it but be wise and be sensitive enough to avoid gray areas there are some questions you don't need to ask do you get there are some questions you don't need to ask and for you lady there are some personal experiences that are so you know there are some personal if if you've been having sex before and um some you know some mistakes you've had before you can just summarize the topic then when you guys get married you can get into the main deal but be truthful enough okay 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 this is what i'm trying to talk about so i was talking with somebody and he was trying to tell me his addiction story now the problem i was having with the addiction story was one he was not talking he was not saying the addiction story in a way of he was not saying it as a testimony do you know he was talking his he was saying his addiction story and he was erecting at the same time you see you see my point so there is a normal way if I can talk about my addiction story. Someone else can talk about his or her addiction, sexual addiction story. And nothing will happen. It will be very sane. So what I'm trying to say is that when you talk about sex, maintain that same atmosphere, that godly atmosphere. So there are some languages you don't use. There are some, there are some details you don't give. Like this guy that was talking about his addiction story, I had to ah. Like seriously, why I couldn't talk so much was because he was a public figure, so to say. So, but there are some things he was so so much details he was saying, and I was like, ah, uh -uh, is this necessary? You how you were addicted? Fine. Thank God for you. You are no longer addicted. If that is the truth, but thank God for you. You have said it all. Do you get? So avoid those gray areas. If you were addicted to sex before and you're trying to tell your spouse that I was addicted to sex. In fact, self, with the leading of the Spirit of God, you won't use vulgar languages and you won't go into some nasty details that will spur up the other person. Do you get? And also, auntie, whenever he's coming to visit you, help a brother. Help a brother. There are some times that you want to show him how sexy you are. 
Eh, eh, it is not necessary. Oh, it is not necessary. Shame me, two of you, marry. He will see everything. So there is, see, even if he means wearing suits and sitting down in the house, wear the suit and see, the devil is very tricky. <laughs> he is very tricky. So we have to use common sense to follow the devil. He is very tricky. Even if he means wearing suits, wear the suit, wear the suit. I remember those times that. <laughs> I was cutting my husband. If we want to do a video chat, he wears, he wears like you, you would think he's going out. At some point, when we got married, we wanted to do, and we were, we were this time we wanted to do video call. So he now told me he was very singlet. So he now told me that, ah, babe, do you know that I wanted to go and wear shit? <laughs> I've forgotten that I'm married. Do you know, that was how the tea was into us. So even with the video calls and everything, dress well. Until, because you don't know the, the time you will stand up. <laughs> you don't know when you do something. And now you put brother in trouble. So be careful. Be careful. Flee those things. You, you don't need to say a Delilah like I said. Flee those little, little subtle things. Flee those things. And also, know when you've gone too far. When the hog is becoming too huggy. Stop the hug. You have you have so many times to hug. Oh. When the hug, you are now started hugging for a long time and the hands are now, you know, the hug was formerly, the hands are at the back, but now it's going down to the waist. That is a red sign. Run. Flee from it. Flee from it. That is a very dangerous sign. Flee from it. I don't know if you understand me. So, the hug does not make you a bad person. Yes. It doesn't make you a bad person. But the devil can hijack anything to for his own selfish reasons, for his own selfish works. So flee, flee, danger, danger signs, flee, danger roads, flee from every of these things. Now, if I feel um, she, she doesn't mean I'm a bad person. You are not a bad person, my dear. You are not a bad person. If you feel all oh, cozy, you want to be hugged, you want to be kissed, you want to be cuddled, you are not a bad person. But what is bad is the timing is wrong. The timing is wrong. So there is there is an inner strength in you that will want to wait. There, there will be, a, like I'm married to my husband, anytime I want to hug him, I'll hug him. There's nobody that tells me, hey, don't hug your husband now. No. There will be a time that you can hug him anywhere. You can hug him anywhere. Do you understand? So for that meantime, as far as he has proposed to you and you guys are working towards marriage, be careful enough to know that the devil is working. Especially if your wedding date has been fixed. Because of course, immediately wedding date has been fixed, you guys will always be together. You are sending wedding cards to this person. You are going to meet this person. You are talking life together. You are talking wedding plans together. You will always be together. So you have to be careful. You will always be together. So you have to be careful. In my relationship, was I all a saint? Was my husband all a saint? No, we were not all. There are some times that we'll go out and meet people and we'll have to come back and we are coming back late and all that. And some of those nights, we are tired and I'm tired. Especially me now, like the lady, I'm tired. Oh, no, 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 no. Ah, the brother with Jack Powell. <laughs> you just say, no, no, it's getting late. We have to go. And you go. So that is, that is what fleeing is. So it's not only when you see a naked lady, you say, I can never say I should flee. Those little, little things. And it brings me to say that you have to be strong. You have to be strong. As a lady, be strong. There is, there is a strength that lies in you that you don't know of. If the Lord is able to put sexual urge in us as single, it means that there is a strength in us. If not, he would have, Leave, left the sexual urge, then when we not get married, he will not put it. But he put it in us from when we were born. So it means that there is a strength to overcome in you. It's just that sometimes we are too weak or we are too, too, I don't know how to put it now, that we don't know that there is a strength and we don't use it. There is a strength in you. So for that courtship area, that courtship time, and you're feeling that, hey, can I do, can I do this? There is a strength in you the the lord is saying his strength is is being made perfect in your weakness you're feeling that the sexual or is a weakness you can't just stay you know you just love him so much yes there was a point in my life that hey during the course if i was close to the weather like 
can this wedding please just come like you're falling over and over and over you are falling in love over and over and over and over and over and you are helplessly in love Yes, there will be a time like that. You'll be like, God, please, can this wedding just come? So that will, the, my, my strength is already failing me. There will be a time like that. But the Lord is saying that there is strength in your weakness. That weakness, there is strength. There is strength. So don't overlook it. Don't, don't fall into the a, a, a temptation of the devil don't fall into the temptation of the devil of saying ah eh, me i cannot ah, no ah, eh, please i cannot ah, body no be firewood please for this case let your body be firewood for this case let your body be firewood because as you keep going closer and closer and closer it becomes hotter that's the truth. As you keep going closer and closer to the wedding time, it becomes hotter. You just feel, you just notice that you just feel so unnecessarily sexually attracted to your spouse. Yes. You just feel, ah, ah, what is all this word that you just feel like when you see him, you just feel like running and hugging him. But at this point, you have to hold yourself. You have to be disciplined. Hold yourself. After they say, I do, do you do, you do, I do, I do. You can jump and hug him or in the church. Nobody will say, ah, but I can't that. No, they've already <laughs> pronounced you husband and wife. After he has paid your bride, but done everything he needs to do. You can now hug him and do whatever you want to. In fact, you can tell the people that, ah, I don't want to go for a church again. You should go. Me and the husband, <laughs> we are going straight to the moon. Nobody will say, don't go. Ticket. So, the devil wants to just rob, off of, rob us of the happiness. Don't let that happen. Because there is joy in the bed undefiled. You can, you can proudly tell your children that, see, I dated your father without sleeping with him. I dated your father without, without kissing, without doing all those things with him. It's a proud thing to tell your children. And your children will take it. Your children will pick it. we like, okay. This is what's doing. If my parents can do this and they are still living in harmony, it's what's doing. So you're not just doing this thing for yourself. You're doing these things for your generation. You're doing these things for your children. You're doing these things for the people watching. I was telling my husband, so what if I had messed up? And then in school, I preach sexual, uh, 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 I preach against sexual immorality to the core. Like everybody that comes around me, I say, he say no, capital letter no. So what if I had fallen? What would have happened to those people? I don't like really a whole Sandra. Ah, that means let me go my way or do my thing now. So it's not about you, it's about your generation, it's about the people around you, it's about your children, it's even about your conscience and your happiness. So you have to take that decision. Flee. It might be difficult to flee, but flee. It might be painful, but you'll be thanking yourself. Flee. You see that the, the atmosphere is not becoming so conducive again. Chapa, run. There is no need to stay there and be okay. I will suppress it. You'll be speaking and speaking in tongues. There is no time for that. Flee. Tongues does not cancel spiritual, um, sexuality. Spirituality does not rule out spir uh, sexuality. Let me say this. And we've been hearing it, I know. Spirituality does not rule out sexuality. They are like this. So you're spiritual, you know how to handle your sexuality very well. Okay, guys. Um, sorry for that interruption. We had to take care of our small madam in the house. <laughs> okay, so I was talking about spirituality and sexuality. Yeah. So spirituality does not cancel out sexuality. So we all know that. So no matter who you are, tongue speaking brother, uh, uh, um, tongue speaking sister, you are so you so much of a saint. You are you are so holy, are so holy. Yes. Yeah, so it doesn't rule out your sexuality. What it means that no matter how you speak in tongues, you will still have sexual urge. You will still have sexual urge. Sexual urge. <laughs> Do you get? So. This decision is not just for you, like I said earlier. It's not for you. It's for your generation. So to you out there, that have already, you know, made a mistake here and there. You know, you've made mistakes. You've, you've gotten into sexual relationships. You've gotten into things, messy things. Yes. It's not late to 
turn back. It's not late to make the right decision. It is not late. You can still tell yourself that, wow, like, okay, I'm so not going to be part of this anymore. Then if you find yourself into a relationship where you guys are cutting, yes, you are moving on to marriage, yes, you are even meeting marriage counselors and here and there, there are some lasses of sleeping, cuddling, sleeping with each other's sex, uh, cuddling and all that and all that. My dear, I would advise you just have a break and rethink those things again. Have a break because if you keep going on this, you can't, you can't build... A, 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 a big story building on a faulty foundation. You can't build something nice on a faulty foundation. So you can be falling here and there, standing up, falling, falling, every time you're falling, oh God, we are sorry, you fall again, God, we are sorry. I'll advise you just take a break. If it's something that is re uh, is now a reoccurring situation, you know, okay, today we kiss, oh God, we are sorry, tomorrow we did this, oh God, we are sorry, tomorrow, I would advise you just take a break, okay? So, renew your mind. Let the default state of your mind be free from sexual immorality. That should be the default state of your mind. Like I said, it starts with the mind. So renew your mind. So tell yourself that for every relationship I'm going to get into, from now on, no sexual immorality. I'm going to do it the right way. You'll be proud of yourself years to come. I'm going to do it the right way. I'm not going to cut corners anymore. Because those things that the devil is allowing you to do, those things that the devil is pushing you to do, are things that God has made for you to enjoy. God has made sex for you to enjoy sex to the fullest. But the devil wants to perverse it. The, you know, everything that God created, the devil wants to scatter it. So God has made sex for enjoyment of a couple, enjoyment of married couple. But the issue with the whole thing is that the devil is trying to perverse it. The devil is trying to bring counterfeit of what God has originally created for, for, for uh, joy. So you find yourself, you know, of course, there's no joy in it. When it's not a normal thing, there's no joy in it. So you find yourself down today, up tomorrow, down today, up tomorrow, depressed, feeling guilty and all that withdrawn. That is the work of the devil. So you have to make up your mind. It's not something about, ha, ah, God, Father, help me, help me to overcome. Yes, there's a part of God, help me to overcome. But you have to make up your mind to overcome. Daniel proposed in his heart that you will not be part, you will not partake of the king's meat. Propose in your heart that you will not partake of the immoralities and the uh, uh, perversions that are plaguing our society today. So today we, we, we see a scenario where I, I sleep with him as far as you're going to marry him is right. So before it was sexual most plenty sexual partners, but now just have just one sexual partner, somebody that will just be feeding you. Another level, use a, 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 a condoms, protection. Don't, don't, sleep, don't sleep without protection. So you see how the devil is watering down those standards. My dear, the kingdom of God standard short. So whosoever named the name of the Lord should run away from iniquity. It means that whatever you are doing, run away from iniquity. The gospel has not changed. The standard has not changed. It has not changed from uh, uh, um, now having only one uh, uh, sexual partner. It has not changed though. It is bed, the bed on the field. So it has always been the bed on the field and it still is the bed on the field. So like I said in our former video, even if tomorrow is the D-Day, the wedding day, there is no need going to sleep with him today. What's the difference between today and tomorrow? I don't know if you understand me. So make up your mind. Make up your mind so that your mind will be at peace. Your conscience will be, your spirit will be at peace. That you are doing the right thing. And don't see this as, you know, so many people watch this video and be like, eh, uh, I beg, it's not possible. My dear, it is very much possible. I am one of the many, I am one of the many hidden prophets that did not sleep with their spouse before marriage. So when you're feeling that, ah, it's not easy. You remember what Elijah, Elijah was saying? Ah, Elijah was saying, hey, hey, God, you know, God told him, see, I have 
hidden prophets oh, who are not bound to bear. So, as you are saying, ah, it's not easy, I beg, leave this thing. God is telling you that I have couple, couples, I have marriages that did not defile their bed before marriage. So don't, don't be discouraged. If you're discouraged, look at me. It was not easy. It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. But God gave us strength to pull through. So no matter how difficult it might look, no matter how impossible it might look, there is a strength that is within you that is telling you, you can push through. So you push through. So you push through. There is no temptation that is too great, that is so greater than you that you can't overcome. There is none. There is none. So no matter how much much your body is doing you, every time you see a guy, ah, your body is doing you, gri, gri, gri. hey, you can't stay. Hey, if you see a lady, anything that works in scared, you want to, it is a spirit. So you have to deal with the spirit. Because I know that you are not living in joy. Forget all these things. Ah, we are jiving. You're the big boy. You're the reigning girl. You're the this. You're the that. You're the that. There is no peace. There is no joy. So come, come to the place where there is joy. Come to this other side where there is joy. We live as singles. You know, as singles, you are old. You are, you are chaste. You are, your mind is chaste. Everything. You are not sleeping around, and people are looking at you as a jugger. That is where peace is, my dear. That is where joy is. That is where contentment is. That's where fulfillment is. Sex cannot give you fulfillment. Sleeping around cannot give you fulfillment. So you have to make up your mind and take that decision today that God, from today, I give my body to you, no matter what your past has been. And know this, let, the, the devil should not put you on a guilty trip. God is ever ready to take you the way you are right now. God is more than ever ready to take you the way you are. So don't let the devil put you on a good trip that, ah, you are so bad. Yeah, you are so down. The devil, the, the Lord cannot take you again. No, that is a lie.